Hi, thanks for joining me. I'd like to give you an introduction to the IBM I, mysterious computer from IBM, also known as the AS400, the I series, and the System I. As you'll see, IBM are not the best in the world at naming computers. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, IBM I is a combination of software and hardware. On the software side, uh, it is IBM I, that's its name now, but previously it has been uh, named the I5 OS and it began life as OS 400, Operating System 400. The 400 doesn't stand for anything, it was just a code name, code number that they ended up sticking with. On the hardware, it now runs on Power, which is a unified hardware platform from IBM that can run many different operating systems. Uh, before that, the hardware was known as System I. Uh, before that, it was E Server I5. Before that, E Server I Series. Then it was AS 400E back in the day when everything needed an E on it. And before that, it was the AS 400, which is probably what it's most famously known as. So, what do you do with something like this? Well, it's mainly used by businesses and they use it to store and process the huge amounts of information that they need to run their businesses. You wouldn't see this uh, except in maybe the most uh, dedicated uh, bedrooms of its aficionados. At it's, it's, it's mainly in the server rooms at uh, big companies, medium-sized companies around Britain and around the world. People run their finance systems on it companies run their manufacturing, their stock, uh, their sales. I, I remember seeing one in B&Q uh, point of sale uh, when they were checking all my purchases in at the till, they were checking them in using barcode guns attached to an AS400. Talking of which, how do you connect to one of these things? Well, like most servers, it can operate as a file server so you can connect to it via um, uh, Windows Explorer there we can see uh, looking through the folders it looks just it operates just like a normal file server in that manner it can operate as a web browser and that's probably how most servers are accessed these days um, this is our very own doc store running on an AS400 serving up um, documents but most commonly, it operates as a database server. So it is sitting there, it's got its huge amounts of information and it's serving up. In this instance, yes, it's as a web server running on a Windows PC that is pulling the data from an AS400 and then presenting that to, the, to your browser. And uh, this is um, uh, in for system I workspace anywhere showing uh, System 21 information. Okay, there finally, um, and the one we're going to concentrate on today, it, you can access it using IBM I Access Client Solutions, which is a snappily named product. Uh, it took over from IBM I Client Access Solutions, which is an entirely different uh, product, which is now retired, uh, but was hugely popular in its day. This Access Client Solutions is Java based and runs cross platform. It does many of the same things, including the crucial green screen, which you see down in the right hand side. Now, the green screen, it's a uh, famous name uh, called that because of the default colors. As you can see, it's actually a black screen with green text, but hey, uh, we're not, um, who's counting? So this is what a green screen looks like. And this is provides the gatekeeper access to the uh, IBM I if you want to get into actually the um, operate on the machine directly. Now you'll notice a few things. It's all text. 
the, you can click around but there's no mouse it, you can use it just using the keyboard and I think the best way to look at it is as being efficient rather than old-fashioned you will be surprised at how much you can get done using a green screen um, a mouse is lovely for graphical applications but when you are talking data like the IBM I does then really a green screen has you covered trust me on that right so we're going to sign in here and I just show you uh, make sure that you've got your uh, you're correctly attired of course uh, any IBM S400 needs to be operated while wearing a shirt and tie the um, requirement to wear a lab coat was uh, removed after the system 36 and 38 I think you'll remember anyway properly attired we've signed in now what on earth are we looking at here well before we dig into this let me take a step back and show you uh, how uh, the IBM I is set up internally. Now, key bit, this is a complicated looking screen, but really the key bit is in the middle. There's the integrated file system interface, and that is a middleware in between the us users up at the top and all that data that we want accessed to which is down below there's various different ways of accessing it the file servers the uh, 5250 emulators the green screens up at the top and down below there's various different ways of storing information there's a few file systems here um, the integrated means uh, in file system means that uh, there's they keep adding uh, other file systems root file system is the daddy that you can connect to everything from there um, there's a uh, QNTC which is network shares QDLS which is an old uh, IBM filing system but the one I want to take a f focus on is qsys.lib file system which is peculiar to the AS400 and peculiar is quite a good description now it's a bit like folders uh, that you're familiar with but you can't store uh, folders in folders in qsys.lib uh, folders in qsys.lib are called libraries and libraries can only be one level deep libraries uh, store objects and this is where it gets interesting it's quite unique in this manner in that you can store many different types of objects in a library on the IBM I in the qsys.lib filing system and there are a lot of different types of objects here's a list of just a few of them um, there's many more that can't even be accessed by users but um, for example going from the top there there's um, uh, programs are their objects um, commands menus their objects directories their objects uh, stream files controllers devices device descriptions they're all objects but let's mention just a couple uh, that we're particularly interested in at cobweb communications and the first one is your humble spool file now why is a spool file a spool file is a file that contains text that originally they were designed to be printed out on those reams of paper that fabulous with holes down the side that used to be fed into impact printers and uh, were the mainstay of science fiction uh, movies back in the 70s and 80s pretty much all programs that run on the IBM I produce spool file output for it. and you can go in and you can look at them uh, on the AS400 spool files are objects they sit in output queues which are also objects uh, in libraries and um, this plain text output from the programs is very important to cobweb communications interesting fact here that most of the programs that are written on the S400 are written in a programming language an exclusive programming language called RPG which doesn't uh, 
run on any other operating system. An RPG it stands for Report Program Generator. So they were, it was the entire language was written to help programmers produce these spooled files that would go in the output queues, get printed out onto the reams of paper and produce the reports that run businesses through the 70s, 80s and all the way up to today. So those are spool files. An example of an output queue, there would be queue print in queue user sys. So queue print is the name of the output queue. Queue user sys is the name of the library. And when you type, when you write it out in classic IBM style, you put it the other way around. So you put the library first, then a forward slash, then the output queue. The other object I'd like to mention is physical files and members. Now, physical files can contain one or more members. And members, if you can imagine, they are like, uh, like a text file or a tab in a spreadsheet. Um, mostly, what nowadays, physical files just contain one member and that member would then uh, will often be like a table in a database. But you will come across times when you uh, interact with physical files with many members. For example, all our source code for all the programs that we ever written uh, are written on the S400, on the IBM I, are stored in members in a physical file in a library. So for example, um, the physical file AFATSQ is a database file in library CPPD that stores all of the email and fax queue records for our product that sends emails and faxes from the IBM. As a whistle stop tour into the object orientated architecture of the IBM I. Now let's get back to that green screen. Let's break this green screen down. You've got some um, information at the top, information at the bottom and a long green line in the middle. The bit at the top is the menu. Now this is the main menu. I would ignore that. I've never gone into any of those uh, sections on this particular menu. It's a bit of a red herring designed to put people off. Down the bottom, the blue area is the function keys. Now I know on Windows machines these days, they still have function keys at the top, but they now default to using them for turning up and down volume and for answering phones and changing screen brightness and other such mod cons. But real men and women use them as their proper function keys. And so does the IBM I. You will see some standards across all products on the IBM I. F3 exits the screen that you're on. F12 cancels. They're pretty similar, uh, slightly different. F12 will usually take you back a screen. F3 may take you back a screen, but may also take you right out of the program. F4 is a prompt. We'll see that one in a bit. There's also the F1 key, which will um, bring up some help. F9 key, which is retrieve. Uh, we'll look at that one again. F5 is refresh, just like on a browser. And F10 gives you more information. These are the standards and you will see them uh, across screens. Finally, we get to the command line, that enticing green line with the white cursor on it. Now, what are we going to type on there, you ask? That is a very good question. Here are some suggestions. Okay, let's pull up a real live green screen. We'll sign in. I use the tab key to switch between fields. I use the enter key to enter my information. I'm in. Now, first command, E-D-T-L-I-B-L. -L. What on earth does that mean? Well, the as 400 commands are often grouped into three character numer 
men, 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 not three characters, but not always, like Libble there. That could have been shortened, but it's not. So EDT stands for edit, Libble stands for library list. So we're running the command edit library list. Now I could press enter here and I go into the edit library list command. Now we know about libraries. Uh, the important thing about a library list is that when you type a command in or anything on the S400, the operating system will look through this library list to try and find a matching command. And it will start at the highest sequence, the lowest sequence number, this one here, and work its way down through the list until it finds a match. If it doesn't find a match anywhere, then it will report a failure. So I'm going to add our library, CPPD, which is our product, to the top of the library list. That means it will be searched first. Hit enter, hit enter again, and I'm back here. Now I can type in go CPPD. CPPD is our product, and that will call up the menu of the CPPD product. And now these are uh, menus that you can explore at your leisure, and you can go through but these are menus that we use an awful lot and getting to know those may be very important depending on which part of the business you're working in now what i will do is i will f3 i'm back to where i was before so that's exited that menu and sent me back to where i am i press f3 again nothing happens you see that white cross at the bottom that means it's processing the command and then it's finishing if you ever do something wrong you will get a, if I try and type up here, you see I get a little red cross and it says the problem. And to get out of this, you can't do anything until you press the reset button, which is normally mapped to the bottom left hand key, uh, maybe the control key on your keyboard. Press that, you've reset. Now, I can go down here and press F1. That brings up information about that part of the screen. I can press F10 to view messages in my job log. Job log is very useful uh, place. It shows you all of the messages that have uh, you've generated. And often it will be a place where you can find why something isn't working. So how do you get in there? You can press F1 like that from anywhere you like. There's some more information or you can type DSP, J-O-B-L-O-G, DSP display job log. Hit enter and we're back into the job log again. Press F10 to show message details, F5 to refresh the screen and then you can see all the messages in your job log. What you can do with one of these is you can press, you put your cursor on the message, press F1, you'll get a detailed, more detailed information about that message. Oh, trust me, the AS400 always has a message somewhere. You've just got to track down where that message is. Also, something to note, F9 there. So the, I f 9 to retrieve my previous commands. As you can see, you can go back, keep pressing F9, and you will go back through your command history. F10, F5, page up. Now, the, the job log works from top to bottom. So the earliest messages are at the top and the latest messages are at the bottom. What people often do is look upwards for the first error message. What I recommend you do is keep paging up until find the first error message going downwards, not the first error message going up, because the first error message you find looking upwards may well be preceded by another error message. And it's probably that error message that is the root cause, not the one below. The one below is probably caused by the one before it. So find the earliest error message, not the most recent. So that's job log. Um, we could have a look at, let's go and have a look at some spool files. So type work, just going back here, going to output queues. Let's go work out queue. 
work out queue, hit enter. Now it lists all the output queues on the system. You can see how many spool files there are in each output queue and the status of the output queues. Imagine these output queues, some of them are attached to printers, many of them are not. But if you held an output queue, it wouldn't send its spool files to the printer. Um, it's a great print server, IBM I have, I mentioned that. So there's an output queue called Cobb Test. So we can do a five against that. This option column is very common. You will see options, the numbers that you can type in up here. So this often is a, I'm gonna press five and that will send me into a look at the output queue. Each one of these rows is a spool file. And again, I can do a five to view the information in that spool file. And now you can see that's a spool file. And if we sent that to a printer, it would print out looking just like that on the printer. To shortcut that, we could have put workout queue, cob test. Boom, you're straight into it. But it's a different cob test because it has found it in the queue user sys library, as you can see up here. That was the first one it found. Okay, this is fun, isn't it? Here are some other commands. Work link, WRK, LNK. That takes you into the filing system. F3 back out again. Start PDM, um, a programming development manager. Now this is a bit like File Explorer, but for uh, qsys.lib filing system on the S400 and here if I do a three and press enter I could go and look at our source files in our source file library and here are all the source files that go to make up our product and if you do a five against one of those you can see all the source in there this is what RPG looks like don't look away look away um, what other commands we could do? Start query. I won't do that one. That one um, allows you to query file database files. Uh, it's a very popular way of extracting information out of databases, running queries on them. So is strsql, which is a uh, SQL command line for the for the people who are more into uh, the more popular, shall we say, SQL way of querying databases. Work SBS, work subsystems. Now subsystems are uh, places where programs are running all the time on the IBM I. Now the IBM I is a multi-user operating system. It can do many things at the same time. And as you can see, these are all the different subsystems that are running at the moment. The HTTP server is running in QHTTP SRV. This green screen that we're running is running in QINTER subsystem. There's uh, various other system subsystems here, but R1 is CPPD. And if I do an eight to work with subsystem jobs, you will see these are all the programs that are running uh, there's two pages, three, two and a half pages of jobs running in our CPPD subsystem doing various different things. This CHTTPD is the one that uh, is our web server. The EML send is the one that sends emails uh, from our message queue. And there's various other ones running on there. You can do a five to view this job and then a ten to view the job log for that job. And you can see lots of information, very useful. And that goes for all jobs. Now I'm at f 3 back to the command line. I could have said work subsystem job CPPD. It would have taken me straight there. DSP MSG, display messages. We saw our own message queue. But there are other message queues as well. DSP 
MSG. If I prompt it by pressing F4, it says, what message queue do you want to use? This star is quite common. That means um, uh, a system, uh, a default work user will be just show me the message queue for the default user, but we could put sys opera. So show me the message queue of the system operator. So these are the messages. Uh, this is a great place to come and have a look if you've got a problem because a lot of uh, messages like printers not working or problems with databases, files that are broken, network issues will be reported in the QSIS Opera message queue. So that's another one. Uh, very useful. I'm going to finish off with uh, a couple user profile work user profile. If I prompt it again, it will ask me which user profile I want to look at. There I can see um, I can go in and I can see my user profile uh, or change it there. And then finally, the command you need to know if you only need to know, if you only know one command is go. Press F4 on that. It says which menu do you want to go to? I say go to all of them and it lists all of the menus on the system and you will see there's the CPPD one in our CPPD library. So there's a few in there, but most of them are in this QSYS. Now any library beginning with Q is a IBM system library. Um, QCOBSYS is our own version of that. QUSERSYS is a library provided with uh, the intention that you put your stuff in it. QGPL is Q General Purpose Library is another one. I'm not sure, never understood when you should use Q user sys and when you should use QGPL. They're both there for you to use, but Q sys and any other libraries beginning with Q do not put anything in them or there will be tears and definitely don't delete anything out of them. So this menu, these menus are um, have got everything that you might want to do on an AS400. If you are looking for something, you will find it in these menus. One other thing to remember, when the fun stops, stop and sign off. Always remember to sign off, usually by using the sign off command, or if you're back on the home screen, you can enter 90 and then you're back to the sign on screen the resources have been released the s400 is happy that is everything i would like to give you as an introduction to the ibm i thank you if you've got any questions just ask in the comments enjoy the ibm i <laughs>